Hello and welcome to Season 7, Episode 15 of the Ubuntu Podcast. It's Wednesday the 9th of July and we're going to discuss what's been happening in the news and there's a lot of news and we're going to talk about what's been happening in the Ubuntu community. If you're listening live, you can send us messages using the chat thing on the website and in the Hash UPC IRC channel. I'm Mark and joining me this week are Tony. Hello. Laura. Hello. And Alan. I've got the big chair to myself. Yeah. It's called a sofa. Mark is lurking to my right. Yeah. I just like to think of it as a wide chair. <laughs> <laughs> well, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see why that's so weird. <laughs> it was the uh, the sad way that you stroked the seat where Mark had been sitting that really got, really got to me. Right. Yeah, he's moved over there. I'll take a photo and post it on the Twitters later. Okay, cool. Good. Excellent. Okay. Yes. So, are we going to get on with some news? Yes. Yeah, why not? Here's the news. <laughs> Microsoft, enforcing a US federal court order, seized 22 domains from noip.com, the dynamic DNS provider. Why did they do this? Oh, this must be why my noip.com service <laughs> broke earlier in oh, the week. Oh, well. Yeah, so well you know you're what one you should of the do? millions of innocent customers who is affected by this according to noip. You should read the news more. Especially yeah. the news that we put in here two weeks ago when this actually happened. <laughs> oh, this explains a lot. However, what happened? So they, 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 were, um, they claimed that they uh, got the domains because the domains were being used to distribute malware. So a lot of people use noip and other dynamic DNS names to point to... Um, you know, IP addresses either on their home connections or other like yeah. compromised machines. Uh, um, right. So rather than you know, rather than directing people at you know IP addresses, they're directing them at real host names. I guess it gives them a bit more legitimacy, but it also means it's easier for them to get to that box. Mm. Yeah, and so, I guess people who are on home connections that have dynamic IPs, exactly. they do change. Right. So they yeah. can keep track of their so compromised it's quite hosts. Ha- handy tool for those people who want to send out lots of spam or control IRC command and control. You know, bots and stuff. IRC bots, yeah. I'm yeah. sure that all of the botnet people are after a bit of IRC. Well, no, they, a lot of those bots that control the the, oh, the, the compromised machines oh, use IRC. Sorry. Yeah, I thought you so they like... summon them all in an IRC channel, like a private IRC channel, and all the bots check in, and you see, and they're all coming from random, you know, all these connections coming in from compromised machines. Mm. And then they send a command via IRC to all those machines. So, yeah, oh. it's, you know, but... Um, Microsoft basically didn't tell no IP and just appropriated the domains. Yes. Which, which was a nice. bit of a problem for the people who happen to have domains on no IP. How did they appropriate it? I mean, I can't just go and say, can you give me give your, us your domain? domain? Yeah, well, they didn't have to go and ask them for the domain, did they? Because the domains aren't under the control of the company that uh, it's like Nominate and uh, I, can. I can. Yeah. You go to them and ask them with right. a court order. Oh, right. Give, oh, right. Us, give us those domains. Point the domains at these boxes and we'll look after those. Thanks very much. So, right. yeah, there was a bit of brouhaha. So there was a court order. Uh, yes. Right. Um, and no IP, you know, obviously criticised the move, saying they, they had no contact from Microsoft before the enforcement and they would have taken their own action if they'd been informed that that's what the problem was, that there was, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, which is yeah, reasonable to expect. Um, however, they have now uh, restored the, the domains back to no IP. Which is nice of them. Yeah, yeah, thanks very mm. much. Yes. So, yeah, for, for a little while, was it about a week? Or was less, slightly less than a week they, uh, they had control okay. of those. Mm. I, I noticed a uh, kind of 48-hour outage. Right, and it, they couldn't, they, the Microsoft servers that they pointed them all to couldn't cope with all these machines <laughs> really? checking in to get their... To change their their DNS, they should yeah. use some sort of cloud hosting service. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, it raises the question: Should we trust a private company with a commercial interest in this area to yeah. enforce such orders? You know, it's, yeah, it seems very strange. They're not the police yeah, of exactly. the internet, are they, Microsoft? They're just yeah. Well, they they're just a company, a, you know, a tech company. Oh, go and take away a load of another tech company's like Property, assets, yeah. and screw them over. Well. <laughs> To be fair to Microsoft, they do do a lot of security research. I mean, they have to because yes. they have spent a long time <laughs> releasing an operating system which is, you know, very popular, installed a very wide user base with people who don't update their security, you know, their security patches, and you know, it has a few holes in it here and there, as all yeah. software does. Yeah. So, I, I mean, two minds about this. I mean, I think it was a, a, a not a very good move, but uh, somewhat necessary. 
Well, <laughs> no. but there are better ways of having done it. I yeah, think yes. the yeah, I agree. They could. Okay. Yeah. Grr. Yeah, but everything's hours. fine now because they've got their domains back. Yeah, Yay. good. It started to work for me as well, so that's okay. <laughs> Okay, um, I was just absorbing that story for my own self-interest there. Um, meanwhile, in other things, um, benches called solar-powered charging stations, called SUFARs, are being installed in some Boston parks. The stations allow members of the public to charge devices using USB ports, um, having drawn the power from the sun. So they have batteries in them that charge up via solar power, do they? Like Presumably. inside the bench. Yeah. yeah, and they sort of store them and then uh, trickle it out. So these are in parks where people are, you know, going to get a bit of the outdoors, a bit yes. of sunlight. Yes. Mm. And they're well, going to... Yeah, you need charging them because your screen run does, runs down a lot faster in bright sunlight. So <laughs> need... Runs down when it's not connected to a power source, right? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you need you need something. I, you to know, find your way coming. around, you've got your GPS uh, on. And... I, <laughs> I don't know. Part of me just thinks, maybe I'm getting a bit old, part of me thinks yeah. that... Outdoors, you know, you, it'll be the point where you're in a, a park which is like full of grass, and there'll be a, a tree that's actually made of metal, and inside it is, you know, a charging station, and uh, you know, a, it'll be a, one of those things off The Simpsons in memory of a real tree. It's just a yes. hologram. Yes, exa- <laughs> exactly. Yeah, it was all trees around here, you know, when I was a kid. Yeah, yeah. Park benches, in your view, are for w- tramps. And <laughs> well, park benches are just the first step on a slippery yeah, yeah. slope. It's a, it's a slippery slope towards not having any green left. Yeah. yeah, and then yeah. the machines it's will take like, over it's not the like world. Digging up the grass to put one of these in place. <laughs> no, but nice wooden benches. They're nice. They no, are. You can, can make one of these out of wood. Wood doesn't charge very well, <laughs> as I understand it. It's not. Very, it's not very solar reactive. I mean, it's good when it's in the ground think, and growing. I don't think it's the surface of the bench that does the charge. <laughs> Do I think, you think it's like a, a panel on top? Well, right. maybe they should use potatoes. Yes, because they, they, they're full of power. They're full of power. You can run a clock from a potato. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, so, a big so how do you, how bag do you of potatoes? Your, how do you char- I mean, this thing's charging up over solar power. How do you actually charge your device? Then? You plug in a USB cable. Right. So you're going to walk down the street and plug a USB cable to your phone, which has got full of all your secret data, yeah, and then it will yeah. mirror your phone. Random USB onto port. a local tree. Yeah. In, <laughs> yes. Mm, yeah. There was there was actually a, a project I saw a while ago. Of someone like they'd put some stuff on a on a usb stick and then cement it into a wall oh yes and then you could just like plug yeah they call them drop boxes don't they (laughs) no they they have got a name they're like uh yeah um yeah yeah, these people dead 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 drops dead drops dead drops in the war in the war war. yeah so um i wonder what um what type of wood they might make these benches benches out of i wonder whether it might be from an apple tree for apple laura save us yeah so um, the KDE devices. team were trying to make a low-cost open <laughs> tablet. Oh, the Vivaldi? The, the, no, the Improv. Oh, yeah, oh. that was like a board that you could play with, which you could build a tablet around, wasn't it? Yeah, and uh, they've given up. Oh, uh, because enough. they reckon that it the, the hardware is just not at the point where it's non-proprietary. Right. So, so it's sort of not worth it. So you get a partial, ideally full refund. If you support oh, the right. project, it's yeah, this was sad. one of Aaron Saigo's projects, yeah, and it was all based on some of the technology that goes into uh, KDE plasma and and that kind of stuff. Um, and they were doing deals with with uh, or attempting to do deals with companies in um, in uh, in the Far East to manufacture these these boards, yeah, and run and they'd be fully free software. Yes, right. And that was the that's the sticking that point, was, and it's just well, that was the funny. selling point. That was the selling originally. point. <laughs> Sadly, the sticking point too. Um, there is a free open laptop project. Oh yes, Novena, oh the one from Bungie. But it's so much more expensive. Um, right. So they said that the improv board was expected to sell for around seventy five dollars. I'm getting this from Lilliputing dot com. Uh-huh. Um, but the you know it's like five hundred. Oh, the, the one from Bungie is, massively is, expensive. is huge. It, it's a PC crowbar into a, like, well, an ARM computer crowbar into a laptop E style case. We talked about that a few weeks ago, actually, mm-hmm. didn't we? Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the improv board is, is the other end of the scale. It's like the super cheapy end of the scale um, and all fully free software. But yeah, it's, it's a shame. It, it yeah. kind of all fell apart on the mailing list. There were, there were horrible, uh, oh. acrimonious discussions last month, and it, was, it kind of was pretty obvious it was falling apart, which is a real shame. Because you know, can a community project really get uh, enough momentum and coordination together to, to have hardware manufactured? I'm not sure it was 
properly what you would call a community project. I mean, it was right. run by people, and Aaron put his, some of his own money into it, a quite a substantial amount, as it, it's been reported. He put in like $200,000 into the thing, which, you know, <laughs> sounds like a lot of money from one individual, but, you know, in order to fund a, yeah. uh, a large project, you know, you need millions, maybe yeah. 30, 30 million. million. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. And even what twelve or thirteen millions a lot. That's not, and that's just that's not just enough. That's not enough. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's not enough. <laughs> <laughs> it's never enough. Um, the Authority for Television on Demand, ATVOD, a subsidiary of the UK broadcast regulator Ofcom, has contacted the online newspaper UK Column, requiring them to submit to the body's regulation. I've never heard of either of those. No. Yeah, no. so so UK Column is like a video blog. Well, it, no, it's not. It's a it's an online news website which has a YouTube channel. Okay, where they put are they not the same things? Well, no, I mean, okay. the, they, I think we're arguing over semantics, yeah. but no, yeah, they they have video content, it's a news site, and they yes. stream it. Well, it, you, uh, it can be streamed via YouTube. Yeah, yeah. okay, and right. at, at VOD is um, a privately held company uh, under the direction of Ofcom. And they have asked uh, UK Column to submit to their regulation. And their regulations are quite onerous and require them to pay money yeah. to ATVOD for that regulation or that membership. And th- that has a knock-on effect for anyone who's streaming anything that looks like a TV program. Because as far as ATVOD are concerned, their show looks like a TV program. But it's not on the TV. Yeah. How do you in, define... In the, in the conventional sense of the box so, in, like... the, in the room. Yeah. It's, it's streamed from YouTube. It's not broadcast... No. In, in using satellite or no. uh, well, free view technology. You can't well, just, if, you... if, if you're sat on satellite internet, then it is, yes. Okay, right, yeah. It just happens to be using different protocols, then it's not UHF or you know DVB-T, it's H.264 over TCP IP, but it's still broadcast from a couple of guys well, making what not, looks like a new It's program. not really broadcast in that you won't just... You, if you tune into the right frequency, you don't happen to receive it. You actually have to go to YouTube and say, give me that video. Right, in the same way that I have to go to my telly and choose the right channel. It's mm-hmm. it's not that far removed in, in a high level, you know, what is a television? <laughs> <laughs> so if we streamed our podcast live, would that count as broadcasting? Don't know. Well, the thing is, th- th- it's a bit vague because they, there's, um, there's very little uh, documentary evidence of what, what they constitute, what their guidelines are for what is a television program. Mm. Um, they seem to be very keen on pornography. Apparently, what? <laughs> what Advon? Yeah, there's the. All, if you look at their news, their it news site. Mark. It's all about pornography. So really? they obviously yeah. think that the hardcore pornography is very television-like. Right. right. Okay. So <laughs> yeah. So uh, so uh, yeah. They 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 want uh, them to pay. What is it? Um, Some money. Yeah. So so basically, that you have to pay a fee. It depends. There, if you, you can actually find the list of fees, I mean, it's like I think the the basic fee for a charity is several hundred pounds. Right, um, and if you don't pay, then you get fined two hundred fifty thousand pounds or five percent of your revenue, whichever is higher. <laughs> nice, which is nice for you yeah. know, you know, if we got decided that they wanted to regulate us because they needed some more money, right? But if you fish around down the back of the sofa for a, a yeah, right. well, no, this, yeah, whichever is higher though. So oh, right, if yeah. it's five percent of nothing, then it's two hundred fifty thousand pounds. That's the penalty though. Yes, if we said no, I I think nobody tuning into our video stream which consisted of alan's webcam taped to a <laughs> curtain pole would mistake it for a professional <laughs> television program well well there wasn't you say that a professional television <laughs> program <laughs> but yeah. there are there are people out there making podcasts that look like tv programs there are. Yeah. Yeah. yeah there are plenty of uh, podcasters who've created like fairly professional look and feel with titles and lower thirds and and you know things that you get on the telly mm. and you know have you been on one of those podcasts alan maybe <laughs> And uh, yeah, never again. Um, <laughs> but you know, forcing uh, podcasters and people who are creating free, yeah. you know, community uh, content to to go through this is ridiculous. And what if they suddenly said, "Oh, we're going to have an at odd whatever audio on demand would be," and say, "Oh, the Ubuntu podcast sounds like a radio show." Yeah, you have to submit to radio regulations. Right. It's the thin end of the wedge. Yes, that's what they're saying. Mm. It, Write you your MP. I yeah. did. Yeah. And what did they say? Um, I only sent it today. She hasn't got back to me yet. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. Let us know. Keep us, <laughs> keep us in the loop. <laughs> in later news, uh, ISPs are taking the GCH, uh, GCHQ to court in the UK over mass surveillance. Ooh. Ooh. Why yeah. that? 
Why uh, that? Over an um, <laughs> alleged breach of privacy and breaking into their networks. That sounds about right. Yeah. <laughs> Finally. Only now. Well, well, yeah. I guess now we've got some evidence from the, the Snowden releases uh, and others that uh, this stuff is going on. It, um, and I guess it takes time for them to mobilise their team of lawyers. Yes, but there's, it's, it's not just like UK ISPs. It's a whole raft of people from all over the world. By looks yeah, like. it's uh, six countries. Germany, Netherlands, South Korea, UK, US and Zimbabwe. Bizarrely, yeah. I'm not quite sure. <laughs> because <laughs> Zimbabwe, Zimbabweans hate everyone in the UK, presume. Right. Okay. Well, yeah, that would, that would make sense, but I think it's only Mugabe. I wouldn't say everyone in Zimbabwe. <laughs> Sorry, no, that was a huge generalisation. One of my friends is from Zimbabwe. I probably shouldn't say things yes. like that. Yeah. <laughs> that's so, yeah. that's at, why. <laughs> yeah. So we'll, um, that's one of those ones where I think we'll have to just keep an eye on. Yes. And we'll roll and roll. What mark? Oh, I see. Right. Um, yeah, interesting. Uh, the Inland Revenue Service, the IRS in the USA, which is the like the in, uh, Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs here in the UK, uh, has denied 501c3 tax exempt status to the Yorba Foundation, which supports development of free software projects like Geary and Shotwell. Mm. Um, the 501 status has previously been granted to software foundations like Apache and Gnome. Um, but as a result, individuals and companies will not be able to write off donations to Yorba against tax. This is quite common. It works in the UK as well. Hmm. Um, if you are registered as a charity, um, if people give you money to do stuff, those people can uh, put it down as a charitable donation and basically don't have to pay any tax on it. They get some either money back or they don't have to pay the money in the first place to the tax man. But reasons for the denial included that the software cannot be shown to benefit a specific group, that it's not educational, and that the world is not a community. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because because you know, one of the things is it has to benefit a community, and they say, oh, well, it's publicly available, so it benefits the world. And they say, no, the world's not a community. Right. Wow. Um, <laughs> that's... <laughs> oh, I love that. Somebody's had to define that, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, does this mean trouble ahead for the software foundations? Yeah. So, I mean, for, for your book, it could mean that they don't get as much funding as they otherwise might because people are less inclined to donate to them. Mm. It's an interesting um, article. It's worth reading, um, written by Jim Nelson. Because it's funny because Yorba maintain a couple of, you know, really decent software projects, Shotwell and Geary, and they're working on other stuff as well. And, you know, they this is clearly, this software is in the benefit of everyone. It it's it staggers me that it can't be seen as you know something beneficial and educational. Yeah, that's the other thing. Yeah, they say that um, if you read the source code, your source code, you're you're doing it to fix something, and anything you learn in the process is purely incidental. <laughs> it can't possibly be educational. It to can't be, able to be read a, a any benefit thing. to read all of the Shotwell source code and you know, and use that for you know your yeah, career. I've, or I've never learned anything from source code. <laughs> well, you should try. <laughs> Oh, I do. I learned something, but it was mostly not to try and read source code. That's <laughs> like the Ruby. Yeah, and anything else. Moving on. <laughs> um, so, Google and the whole uh, censoring history thing. Um, we mentioned that a couple of weeks ago, didn't we? I think the we right did. to be forgotten. Yes. The right to be forgotten, yes. Um, and I don't remember. <laughs> oh. Google it. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> Um, yeah, so Google's been forced to censor the history of Merrill Lynch, apparently. Yes, the ex-boss of Merrill Lynch, wasn't it? They, uh, they were trying to, well, he was trying to get uh, articles about himself removed from all over the place, and including uh, Robert Peston's, uh, did an article, uh, Robert oh, yeah. Peston on BBC did an article some years ago about the guy. And then when when it got uh, removed from the Google index, he wrote another article about it. Yeah, <laughs> linking don't want to the previous one. Yeah, it's, it's just a brilliant way around it. Is uh, oh, here's another article about that article that I wrote that is no longer on Google. Suddenly breaks this whole <laughs> right to be forgotten. So yeah, and then Google have reversed it, haven't they? Oh. Yeah. So they now just said we're not going to listen to the EU's nonsense, or they said for this particular case, actually, he doesn't have the right. Well, Google has a lot of say in what, what they do and don't remove, don't they? So they can't be not applying the law just by refusing one person. Right, okay. Out of thought. Mm. Well, they, haven't, they actually haven't restored the links to the BBC article. They've, re, they've reversed um, their deletion of a Google uh, a Guardian article, but not the BBC one that I mentioned. But, mm. uh, okay. Mm. Uh, CentOS 7 has just been released. It's the first release of CentOS to be released after the team joined Red Hat. Mm. Oh, cool. Well, yeah. well done to them. Anything interesting in there particularly? Uh, uh, System D. Ooh. Oh. Yeah, because previous re versions of RHEL and cent thus CentOS used, used Upstart. Oh, did they? 
Yes. Oh, Gosh, that, we've talked about this sorry, so moved, much. I don't in know. The past. Red Hat just seems really old and crusty, up, so I assumed up, it just used Upstart it. is dead to you, clearly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. So, upstart um, is dead, isn't it? Well, maybe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> moving on. Uh, the Open Rights Group has launched blocked.org.uk, a site that allows you to find out if a site is blocked by an ISP government mandated content filter. Woo! Yes. yes. It's quite handy, actually. You just go to blocked.org.uk and fill in the name of a URL, and it gives you a little table telling you the popular UK ISPs and whether they think that the site that you've filled in is blocked or not. Mm. They've improved mm. it since it's launched as well. So some of them have like the default level of filters and the like, child-safe level of yeah. filters. Rather right. Because basically what they've tried to do is make it so that with it's an example of what happens with as little sort of... Manual. user thought as yeah. possible like you just accept the default or you just say yes or no or yes if there's only a yes or no option right so I, I i don't have the filters switched on on my virgin media connection but to test this i did turn on the filter on my virgin media connection yeah and then found i couldn't actually reach blocked.org.uk the site for looking up what is blocked excellent so i um filled in the form on the website that says if you think this is incorrectly blocked click here so i did and i said please unblock it and then I tweeted at Virgin Media and said, hey, can you please unblock this? And they did. Right. So now and it's B- unblocked. BT it said, also blocked it and they've now unblocked it. Yeah, they said it was erroneously categorised. So, oh, uh, well, that's, yeah. that's right, what? Then. Yeah, and that, that's never going to happen again no. about any website at all. No, that's good. Yes. My, talk Talk block my blog from their kids' safe. Oh, they've got well. something right then. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, we don't have time. Time for no. Tony's gaming oh, news, no, this which is, is a real shame. I was looking forward to those ideas. Yeah, so was I, and he's got so much to talk about. Yeah, it's really unfortunate. So uh, let's move on. That's the end of the news. Okay. The Ubuntu podcast needs you. Yes, you. If you hear something that pleases, puzzles, or piques you, tweet us at UUPC or email podcast at ubuntu-uk.org. You can also talk to us on the telephone, Skype, Facebook, and Google+. Find links to all these places on our website, podcast.ubuntu-uk.org. And remember, if we don't hear from you, we might not have enough content. And that can only mean one thing, more quizzes. I really wish we could get Stephen Fry to give us more quizzes yeah. in his voice. Oh, Brian Blessed. Truly. Brian Blessed will be better. Yeah, he might end up swearing there. So, uh, we have some community news. And the first piece of news is... Um, the Community Donations Fund report for quarter one of 2014 has been published. Ooh, anything familiar on there? Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah. So uh, this Any is... Any events been sponsored? Yes, some events have been sponsored. Uh, so this is... Uh, we've mentioned this before, and uh, it's being done regularly. Michael Hall and uh, Michelle in our office is uh, are working to get these out on a regular basis for transparency purposes. And uh, it details yeah, how much money was donated to Ubuntu. You know the thing when you download Ubuntu, there's a button that says, do you want to donate? Yeah, money that's come in through that. Um, and uh, the carried forward balance from last quarter was $41,500. Wow. And this uh, time we donated a total of $17,000. So there's still some money left in the kitty. Cool. In Where fact, does that Ending go? balance is higher than the starting balance looking at it. It's 43.2 thousand dollars left so if you're doing a a a thing which that benefits the ubuntu community and you need some money then you should definitely apply for some yeah it doesn't necessarily have to just benefit the ubuntu community it's uh there are other things like uh so there's sponsorship for going to events if you're going to give a talk about ubuntu or something or show something off um but there's yeah if you look through the list there's loads of things as a travel um for people going to academy the kde conference Okay. Um, there's a little conference called Og Camp. Ooh, uh, and right. a few others. So is that is that sponsored by Ubuntu? Uh, yes, that's yes, Og- it is. We'll find out more about Og that. Camp in a minute. Org, is that? Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's good and transparent and great. Cool. Excellent. Cool. So, um, go on, Mark. And uh, there has been a an Alpha One release of the Ubuntu Mate Remix. Yes, there uh, has. Oh, do you know anything about that? Alan? I do. Yeah. So this is a thing that me and Martin and uh, Brett have been working on. So we had Martin on the show a few weeks, possibly months ago, to talk about Mate. Yes. And since then, you've been busy. We created a little remix. Yes. And uh, it's it's really nice. Cool. It's um the the Alpha's really good, really stable. There's only a couple of like 
semi significant things like the network manager doesn't start <laughs> the the applet thing, but right. you can just you know, manually run it. It's a known bug, and there's a little UI thing, but most of it is pretty pretty stable. The thing that Martin's working on at the moment is getting it so you can install it on EFI systems, which is a little bit tricky because of all the signed uh, uh, bootloader stuff right. Oh, right. that is done for Ubuntu images inside the data center. Ah, uh, okay. so as a remix, we don't have access to those keys and things. So oh, you could just you know SSH in. <laughs> No, <laughs> I absolutely can't. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't have access to anything like that. So that that we're going to figure out a, right. a solution to. Yeah. yeah, and the website's looking rather nice now. It's looking quite it's swish. Good. Yeah, and we've um, had a few nice reviews. There's a few people who've done preview videos on YouTube, and there's hmm. a few, um, you know, uh, just initial uh, looks at the the alpha. It seems to have gone down pretty well. I like, good. I like the first line of the announcement, which says, what works? Most things. <laughs> And yes. then follows a list of things that don't work. Yeah, it's not a huge list, mm. is it? No, no, it's not. No. No, no. It's, right. it's a list. Yeah, it's not. <laughs> an, it, there is a list there with things in it. Yes, yes. And well, that wouldn't, wouldn't be an alpha. It, yeah. would, it would be final release if it all worked. And um, also in the community, unfortunately, this happens every so often. But somebody's been uh, trolling in the Ubuntu <laughs> community. Um, yeah, so, somebody. Um, Somebody by the name of Alan. Well, specifically ending it with, cheers, Al. Yeah. <laughs> As gives, all my emails do. Yeah. Gives away. It's especially noticeable on the ones where people might get upset. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The yes. chirpiness of it all. So basically, somebody called Alan has been emailing the Ubuntu UK list, pointing out that the British translation for Ubuntu is lagging behind quite a lot of other countries. We're about 30th on the list. Mm. Um, and it's a, <laughs> a call to arms to make sure that all of the words uh, that, are, that are spelt wrongly by Americans are spelt correctly. <coughs> Absolutely. Um, you know what this British reminds version. me of? Has anyone seen that Steve Merchant Newcastle Brown advert? Nope. nope. No. no. I look it up. It's, it's okay. Well worth it. Right, is it okay. something we could embed inside? Not really. Right. Okay, no. we won't do that. Not then. quite family friendly. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the, the the thing that it was um, David Planella who who maintains this hit list of uh, you know who's who's the who's doing well in translation and who yeah. isn't, and uh, he pinged me and said, "Do you know anyone who can um, you know help get these translations sorted?" And I didn't realise just how badly. And this is specifically for the phone. Right. This is the translations of the the uh, UI on the phone. Uh, yes. So, so it says color labor. Yeah, so I, I trolled it a little bit by putting the subject line um, in American spellings mm. just to just to catch people so that they would go, oh, look, he spelled that wrong. And then there's uh, exactly the kind of people I want. You yeah. See? See I did there? yeah. Okay, so we've got some event news coming yes. up. Laura, what's that about? We do. There's a little, little event going on that's called Dog Camp. Hey. And it's going to be uh, in October uh, in Oxford. And apparently it's sponsored by the Ubuntu community. Yay. And the old camp community. Yes. And, yeah. Is that a silver yeah. still? That's silver at the moment. Let's get oh. it up to gold. I think we're probably halfway to gold. Wow. Cool. I contribute. And that's, that's why people, uh, it's a free event. You don't have to pay for a ticket. But if you want to, you could give us some money at the point when you get your ticket. And if and you yes. do, that helps us to... Uh, run the event yeah. Yeah. yeah and that counts as the ubuntu as the og camp community then yes. yeah that's what that is yes so that's the 4th and 5th of october the oxford hotel oxford yes so where can people find out more uh, it's ogcamp.org and if you haven't booked a hotel yet we do have some discounted rooms at the venue um i don't we didn't have a very big allocation so it's basically when they're gone they're gone so if you want one get in quick details again are on the accommodation page on the website Excellent. Yep. And if you're wondering what Odd Camp's about, it's not just about media formats. <laughs> <laughs> and in fact, codex. It, it's hardly at all about them, unless yeah. somebody can do something really witty with Og. <laughs> we've, we've tried to reinvent what Og is every yeah. year. Yeah. <laughs> but it's definitely not audio. The sign yeah. of a successful event is having to explain what it is <laughs> yes. every year. Yeah. Well, you know, it's a good name. It's just... You know. yeah. So yeah, it's all it's all sorts of things, but it it's software, open source, but it's also things like what we call free culture and um, creative common creative stuff, stuff and stuff. hardware hacking and yeah. you know, some people do like you know screen printing. Screen printing, sort of political activism stuff, uh, you know, all sorts of Anything, stuff. Home really. automation. Home automation, yeah. 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 Uh quadcopters, yeah. building, that kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. It's all so good fun. Minecraft. Check Minecraft. it out. Check it out or camp.org. <laughs> Yeah.
There we go, Mark. <laughs> <laughs> That's all for episode 15. We'll be back next week when we'll be interviewing David Herman about his Miracle Cast project. Ooh, what's Miracle Cast? We'll, we'll find, find out. out next week. Save it for the show. Well, <laughs> <laughs> I don't well, think it works when you say it on air because we no, never say it on air. No, we don't do it. It's such a running joke that we've just introduced everybody to. <laughs> 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 oh, Seven right. seasons. Well, we did talk about Miracle Cast in last week's episode a little bit. Yes, we talking did, yes. about so various we'll video technologies. More. So, yeah, listen in. Anyway, see you next time. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.